SpaceX has finally discovered a solution to avert the effects of heavy microgravity on astronauts. Unless you're traveling to space yourself, you cannot fully describe the bad experience astronauts have been facing during space travel after crossing the Earth's atmosphere. Of course, it's a ridiculous experience, and with the effect of microgravity, astronauts' muscles are prone to atrophy, and that compels the bones in the spine to stiffen and straighten out. Such physiological changes help to explain why so many astronauts experience back pain after missions to low Earth orbit. So SpaceX thought about a special starship as the only solution to stop this microgravity effects against the human body. This is Tech Space. If you're new here, we specially invite you to join many of our lovely fans. Kindly subscribe and click on the notifications bell. It motivates us to produce more such fantastic content and you'll have a lifetime access to all of our high-end tech videos. Before we go ahead and discuss what Elon Musk said about creating a special starship that will use artificial gravity to correct the effects of microgravity experienced by astronauts, let me first educate you about how artificial starship works and how it can be generated using principles of physics. The creation of an inertial force almost behaves like the effects of a gravitational force, but it is generated by using technology to create artificial gravity that will be emitted to counter microgravity in space. The artificial gravity is typically generated when a frame rotates at a reference point, as opposed to the force experienced in linear acceleration, which is indistinguishable from gravity according to the equivalence principle. In a broader sense, artificial gravity can also refer to the effect of linear acceleration, like the type produced by a rocket engine. From the perspective rotating or centrifugal spacecraft, artificial gravity by rotation behaves similarly to normal gravity in some ways, but with some initiatives like the apparent centrifugal force felt by observers pushes radially outward from the center, and assume a constant rotation rate, the centrifugal force is directly proportional to the distance from the habitat's center. The amount of gravity felt at one's head would be different from the amount felt at one's feet with a small radius of rotation. This may make movement and changing body position difficult. Slower rotations or larger rotational radii, according to the physics, would reduce or eliminate this problem. Similarly, the habitat's linear velocity should be significantly greater than the relative velocities with which an astronaut will change position. Otherwise, moving in the rotational direction increases the felt gravity, while moving in the opposite direction decreases it, to the point where it should cause problems. The normal force provided by the spacecraft's hull acts as a centripetal force in the context of a rotating space station. Thus, the gravity force felt by an object is the centrifugal force perceived as pointing downwards towards the hull in the rotating frame of reference. The value of little g, the perceived downward acceleration, is equal to magnitude and opposite in direction to the centripetal acceleration according to Newton's third law. Scientists are concerned about the impact of such a system because it has been demonstrated theoretically that the system may cause ear problems to those aboard the spacecraft. The concern is that using centripetal force to generate artificial gravity will cause inner ear disturbances resulting in nausea and disorientation. The negative consequences may be intolerable for the occupants. To mimic artificial gravity on Earth, spacecraft using linear acceleration gravity could be built in the shape of a skyscraper with the engines at the bottom floor. If the spacecraft accelerates at the rate of 1g of the Earth's gravitational pull, the people inside would be pressed into the hull at the same force, allowing them to walk and behave as if they were on Earth without experiencing any causes that could harm the human organ. True, SpaceX has not considered incorporating artificial gravity into the design of the Starship, but when a Twitter user tagged Elon Musk and asked if SpaceX has ever considered tethering a two-crew Starship to create artificial gravity route to Mars, Elon Musk said yes. Consider the fact that astronauts will have to spend more than six months traveling to space, not to also mention that people already wishing to travel to Mars when SpaceX gets everything right and ready. How will these people survive in the Starship with the effects of microgravity, which may cause back pain, blurred vision, muscle contractions and other symptoms? So how do SpaceX and Elon Musk believe these people can experience the microgravity effect without collapsing, dying or contacting a severe health deficiency in any of the body organs? And even if people successfully land from a harrowing Mars trip, will they still want to return to Mars as a second planet after enduring a painful journey on their previous visit? 
If Elon Musk does not accept to apply the principle of artificial gravity to the Starship in order to ensure human comfort and safety, how will SpaceX's Starship protect humans from space radiation and the side effects of zero-g during the journey to Mars? In my opinion, I will answer these questions as regards to what NASA has been doing to shed their astronauts in ISS and maybe SpaceX could implement it into the Starship. But for this method to work for up to 100 occupants in SpaceX's Starship while journeying to Mars is what I think will not work. But trust Elon Musk to surprise us with his creativity and technology. Radiation is energy in the form of electromagnetic waves or particles. When a wave or a particle collides with another object, such astronauts or spacecraft components, the energy is transferred. These waves and particles are dangerous because they pass right through the skin, shedding energy and fragmenting cells or DNA along the way. This damage can raise the risk of developing cancer later in life or, in extreme cases, cause acute radiation sicknesses in the short term. Humans are safe from this danger on Earth. The magnetosphere, Earth's protective magnetic bubble, deflects the majority of solar particles. Any particles that do make it through are also suppressed by the atmosphere. The International Space Station travels in low Earth orbit, safe from the elements, and the station's hull protects crew members from radiation. Scientists in the ISS consult the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Space Weather Prediction Center for a space weather forecast. They notify mission control of possible solar activity. If solar energetic particles are increasing and the space station happens to be passing outside of Earth's magnetic protection, they may advise postponing activities that require leaving the station's safety. The group will keep an eye on the astronauts' space environment no matter where they go. The greater the distance between the crew and the radiation, the more likely it is that dangerous particles will deposit their energy before reaching the crew. SpaceX can also reduce radiation exposure by storing food and water supplies around the Starship's body and having people live in the center, using the supplies as shield. They can also orient the ship with the engines and tanks facing the sun to provide additional shielding. However, even without shielding, the cancer risk is only that of smoking a pack of cigarettes per day. Six months of smoking is not usually enough to kill you. In terms of zero-g, we know that people can survive it, but not as severely as after six or more months in an enclosed vessel. The spaceship can offer some protection through radiation shielding and will most likely have a specially shielded area in the event of a radiation storm. The radiation problem has nothing to do with zero gravity. They would use data collected on the ISS and implement a daily exercise regimen to study the effects of zero-g or even live in an underground tunnel on Mars to avoid radiation. Robots must plan out the tunnel space ahead of time. Since SpaceX intends to transport 100 people on the Starship at the same time, how will this 100 people cope with the micro-gravitational effect while taking a bath, eating or even strolling around? I can't really think of a good answer to this one, but trust Elon Musk. When it comes to technology, he will do what will amaze us. The more pressing question is, who pays all these projects? Many problems can be solved with a few billion dollars, but where will the billion dollars come from? Can Elon Musk and SpaceX fund this project? Even if they can, let us all join hands and pray that SpaceX does not go bankrupt. Long-term exposure to cosmic radiation outside the protection of the Earth's magnetic field poses some risk. But hell no, it will not transform you into a member of the Fantastic Four. If you like this video, you're probably interested in things like space, physics, mathematics, and engineering. In that case, you're a brilliant friend, and people like you are mostly curious about technology and how it works, also interested in creativity and design. We officially welcome you to our family tech space. Hit the subscribe button and answer the question asked in the video, and I will personally reply to you promptly. You will also be in line with our updates and check on us anytime you feel like.